All right, so this is like part 16 now, is that what we're on? Adding, oh, part 17 of creating a quote unquote modern looking WPF app. At least it would be more modern than me styling it from scratch. We started off this app by introducing the myapps.metro library. We've been doing less with the UI, more, more so um, just the logic, I guess. And today we're gonna add on to the UI, so I guess it still pertains that we're using myapps.metro, which is a styling library for WPF. And if that sounds interesting and you wanna catch up from the very beginning, you can feel free to go back to my playlist and follow along from there. And if you get lost in the code, and you miss something or I don't explain something well and you want to go back and check it out, feel free to uh, go in the description and see the code in my GitHub repo. And if you like this kind of stuff, I just make different programming videos. Whatever I'm feeling or whatever I'm learning, I'll come on here and I'll share with you guys and hopefully um, we can both benefit from that. So yeah, feel free to subscribe. Really appreciate it. And let's just hop into it. So where we left off, we were adding uh, expenses to our database. And so let me bring up actually the database browser. And if we go to browse the data in our SQLite database and switch to expenses, we added this one. Um, I titled it gas, so I spent $60 in gas, and that pertains to this budget with an ID of three. And if we go to budgets, that would be this budget right here. So the first thing I wanna do now is whenever a user selects a budget, right here I wanna have a list view and show all of the expenses in the database for that budget. Let's bring them all in and display them to the user. And so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna work on our budget data class and I'm going to write a method kind of like get budgets, except it's going to be uh, get expenses. So public static list of budget, or not budget, expenses or expense. And let's call this get expenses. And we can say, like we have been doing using var db is equal to a new budget context. And inside of this using, we can say uh, return db.expenses.where. And here we can write some kind of expression to say what kind of budgets uh, do we, or I keep saying budgets, what kind of expenses do we want to bring back? And I guess this pertains to um, the budget ID. So what we want to pass in is probably an integer and we'll call it budget ID. So in our expression, we can say where expense X and then say X dot budget ID is equal to uh, the passed in budget ID dot to list. And that should be it. If you want to sort by or order by, maybe we can do that as well. To so dot order by. Also, uh, expense x and x dot regular ID, not budget ID, because they're all going to have the same budget ID. So there's no point in ordering them by that. So once again, what is this doing? This is going through all of the expenses. We just gave that uh, a name x. And we're gonna say where that expense dot budget ID is equal to the passed in budget ID. And then we just order by um, the regular ID. So this column right here, actually we're in the budget. So this column right here. So if we go back to the XAML, let's go ahead and create our list view. So down below, and it's gonna look a lot like this list view right here. So I'm gonna keep it up here for reference, but in the stack panel is where we're going to place this list view. So a list view, and inside this list view, let's do list view dot view. Looks like I got my cap lock on. And then grid view. But before we get into each grid view column, I'm going to give this parent list view a name. So the X namespace name. Uh, let's give it expenses list view as the name and grid dot column is going to be column one because it's going to be in the middle here. I don't think I want to give this one an actual border. We'll see how it looks. Um, I don't think it's too important. And right now we're not going to worry about a selection changed event. 
because we might go into editing expenses. I don't know how far I want to take this because <laughs> I feel like uh, this has just been a really long series and I, I wouldn't mind going back into something else. But uh, if we do decide to, you know, edit, maybe we want to give it some kind of event. But for now, we're just going to leave that be. And then in the grid view, let's add two columns. So grid view column one is going to have a header of title. So what's the title of the expense and the binding for that. So the display member binding binding is title because if we go and look at the expense class. That's the name of the property um, that we care about for this particular column. And I'm just going to copy this whole line and below except instead of title, it's going to be amount. Okay. Uh, is that all we need to do? I guess we'll find out. So what I'll end up doing is whenever a budget is selected, so whenever this is fired, we're going to add on to that handler, the method of calling and getting all of the related expenses and then setting this expense list view dot source equal to, um, those expenses that we just pulled in, if there are any. So if we go to the code behind and I try to find that selection change, should be this one right here. Let's go to the end here and say expenses list view dot item source is going to be equal to budget data dot get expenses. And we have to pass in a budget ID. And if we remember, um, whenever we select a budget, I go ahead and I store that selected item up here. So we can just reference that and say selected item dot ID. And I guess the moment of truth, I need to remember which, okay, so it should be the third budget. If we click, um, we will get some expenses in the list view. And by some, I mean just that one. So let's start this and see if we do get that one expense. So I'll click on this and here we go. We actually do, we get gas and 60. So uh, if I had another expense and I go to submit it and stores in the database, this isn't gonna be refreshed automatically. I'll need to run this again. So let's go ahead and actually do that. So I'm gonna copy this line and let's find the create expense. And at the very end, if everything is successful, Let's just do this. There could be a, an easier way to do this. Um, well, there definitely is, but I'm kind of lazy. So as of right now, let's just have it query the database after it, after it added to the database that expense. You know, theoretically, this should do the same thing. So we'll click on this. We'll see the one expense. I want to add a new expense. So instead of gas, let's call this rent. And my rent is $1,000. So we'll create that expense. I guess I can get rid of this breakpoint. And there is our new expense. And we can go all day. However, our budget amount, our total budget amount is $800. And you can see I've added these two expenses. And it says our remaining monthly budget is still $800. We kind of neglected this down here. And this is a feature that I would love to see get updated. Um, every time an expense has been added or changed, if we, if we go that far and allow editing to these. So I think in the next video, we're going to probably make a pretty short one just to, uh, have this automatically update with each expense. And it'll probably go in a negative because there are probably often times where you go over budget. And as of right now, you know, I already spent $1,060 and my budget was only 800. But that's all I wanted to do in this video. Um, I guess the next one will work out this logic and see where that takes us. As always, thanks for watching. I really appreciate you. And I hope to see you in the next video.